Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. There are a lot of interesting details in Battlefield 1, plus some intriguing stories about the game's development. Today I'm going to shed some light on the game, telling you six things you might not know about Battlefield 1. First up, let's talk about Monte Grappa. The map is known for its massive fortress cannons and bunkers, as well as for the giant airship Behemoth. It turns out it was also almost known for its landslide levolution in multiplayer. Monte Grappa is based on Battlefield 1's single-player mission Avanti Savoia, which prominently features a landslide. When Battlefield 1 launched, data miners found reference to the landslide in the game's multiplayer, but efforts to trigger it proved futile. After dropping bombs all over Monte Grappa myself for over an hour, I asked a dev who confirmed they almost had the landslide working in multiplayer, but it had to be left on the cutting room floor. There are a number of other smaller levolutions that did make it into Battlefield 1, however, including quite a few on Foul Fortress, like the main towers and part of the fortress wall. There's also the Rock Bridge on Sinai Desert, though that's far more well known. In my opinion, it's a bit of a shame that the landslide levolution for Monte Grappa never made it into the game, but it seems the community has mixed feelings on levolution as a game mechanic in general. The second thing you might not know about Battlefield 1 is that the recently added General Liu rifle used to have a bolt-action mode. Early weapon builds on the Battlefield 1 community test environment for In the Name of the Tsar let players manually cycle the bolt on the weapon as you would a straight pull. Interestingly, that's not a glitch, but rather an actual feature of the gun. The weapon's real-life counterpart could actually be set to work as a bolt-action rifle if necessary. Developers say the Liu's bolt action was removed from the final release of In the Name of the Tsar due to animation issues. Next are the bells on Volga River and Brusilov Keep. They're more than just part of the map environment. They can actually be shot to create noise. And while this is little more than a novelty on Volga River, shooting the bell on Brusilov Keep can actually be a tactical decision. If a sniper has you pinned down, shooting the bell is a quick way to disorient and deafen a player camping in the tower. It can also be used to cover the sound of friendly players climbing up the ladders for a sneaky kill, or be used to signal friendly players by melee. Fourth is a free super rare tank skin. That's right, there's a way to get a guaranteed super rare tank skin in Battlefield 1 without touching scraps or battle packs. It's the Black Bess skin for the Mark V from the game's single player. Come and meet Big Bess. Women of your dreams. Somehow everyone has overlooked this gem since the game's release. Just a little over one half of 1% 1 of players have unlocked this skin, obtained by collecting all 66 of the game's field manuals found in the Battlefield 1 campaign. That may sound a bit tedious, but if you really want to stand out in multiplayer, I've seen the skin one time in the wild over my 200 hours of playtime in Battlefield 1. There are plenty of guides online to help you find the field manuals in the campaign, so hop to it. Fifth is one of the most efficient but unassuming ways to help take down the airship Behemoth. Many players think they need to find an AA gun to do some serious damage, but that's not the case. Stationary heavy machine guns in Battlefield 1 absolutely shred the airship, giving you hundreds of points in mere seconds. They can even disable weapon gondolas and engines and are more difficult to locate with counterfire, partially because those in the airship don't assume they do any damage. Range also seems superior to AA guns, so the next time the enemy is reinforced with an airship behemoth, grab the heavy machine gun and get to work. Last is Danny Edwards. If you're not familiar, Edwards is one of the game's protagonists in Battlefield 1's single-player campaign. Interestingly, his name is probably a tongue-in-cheek reference to a real-world location. A few months ago, I took a trip to Kansas City, Missouri to visit the National World War I Museum and Memorial. The place was amazing, and I saw tons of stuff I'm still working on, but something near the museum caught my eye. Less than a mile from the museum is a well-known local restaurant, Danny Edwards Boulevard Barbecue. It could be a coincidence, but if you ask the folks at the museum, that's unlikely. They're convinced Dice Dev scouted the museum and probably got hungry in the process. So, there you have it. Six things you might have not known about Battlefield 1. Which was the most interesting to you? And what are your favorite bits of obscure Battlefield 1 knowledge? Tell me in the comments. 
If you enjoyed this video, please take the time to leave a like and subscribe. Sharing on social media like Facebook and Twitter helps the channel as well. To take your Battlefield 1 game to the next level, check out the Battlefield 1 Ultimate Utility app with a link in the video description. And as always, thanks for watching.